Macs are super easy to use, but I think you might be missing out on a few really handy little shortcuts. Hello and welcome back to Marcos Reviews. Thank you for subscribing if you have. If you haven't, the button is just down there. As mentioned during my recent macOS setup tips video, I'm not much of a tinkerer. I used to be, I just can't be bothered anymore. But I have, and as like most people who use computers, I have developed a way of using Macs that just works for me. And sometimes you just need to sit back and take a look at how you use a device to work out what you do to make your life easier. I did that recently and I've discovered five time-saving tips for Mac OS, which I think you're gonna like. The first one is a thing called Spotlight. If you've never heard of it, it's just a way of searching your Mac for anything. And there's two ways of accessing Spotlight. The first one is to click the hourglass at the top right of the screen. That's long-winded, pointless. Rather than doing that, hold down Command on your keyboard and tap the space bar. And that will give you this search field right smack bang in the middle of your screen. And from that, you can literally search for anything. You can search for apps, either apps that you have installed or apps that are on the App Store. You can search for emails, files, notes. It will pretty much unearth anything on your Mac. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, I don't tend to use macOS to its fullest. I know I can do a bit more with Spotlight than I probably do at the moment. I also know there are some fantastic third-party apps that can replace Spotlight and do an awful lot more. But I use Spotlight just for one thing, and it, it makes a big difference overall. Now I have a very tidy dock. I've mentioned this in a video I did recently, which I'll link to above. I remove things from the dock that I don't use, and I just like to keep it nice and tidy. And generally speaking, if I want to open an app, I'll find it on the dock. Sometimes though, I feel lazy, or I just want to do it a different way, I hit command, space, and type in the first couple of letters of the app. I also use it to access apps that I don't have in the dock. So apps that I don't use quite as frequently, but I perhaps need once or twice a week. Command space, type in the first two or three letters of the app, you find it straight away. You might get more out of Spotlight. You might find it handy to find emails and files and things. But for me, it's just a great alternative way to get into apps. The second time-saving technique I want to mention actually uses a third-party app. And it's an app that is very, very kindly sponsoring this video. Now, I only accept sponsorships from apps and products and things that I use. Otherwise, why do it? I want to recommend stuff that I, I use and I'm familiar with. So the app in question is called Text Sniper. It kind of does what the name suggests. You can basically grab text from anything on the screen. So if you see an image with some text on it that you can't highlight and copy, Text Sniper will let you grab that text just by drawing over it with a little cursor and pasting the resulting text it grabs from that image into anything, into Word, into Notes, wherever you like. Now I know that macOS Monterey is going to have something similar with a thing called Live Text, but the difference with that is that Live Text only works on images. Text Sniper works on anything on the screen, so if you've got a PDF open for example, I always have this issue with PDFs where there's a portion of text I want to copy and paste into Word or into Ulysses or something and nine times out of ten it won't work or it'll copy the wrong part of it or ruin the formatting or it'll just do something really annoying. With Text Sniper I can just choose the bit of text I want to copy and it does it and it's absolutely flawless. It never screws it up, it always gets the text right. I also use Text Sniper with Notion quite regularly because Notion is a brilliant app for running things like a YouTube channel or your own personal wiki or your own CRM. It's it's just an awesome, at some point I will do a video on Notion and it, it runs this business basically. But it's unbelievably irritating when it comes to copying and pasting text from it. So if I've got a card in Notion with a bunch of bullet points for a, a blog or something that I want to take out of that and put into Ulysses, for example, then again, nine times out of 10, I can't copy it because it, for whatever reason, Notion isn't very good at dealing with copy and paste. Text Sniper, you just draw over the bit of text you want and it will just grab that text and you can then paste it wherever you want. I've also used it during meetings. So if someone is presenting something on Teams, for example, and I want to grab the text they're presenting, historically, I'd have to do a screenshot and then either manually type it out myself. With Text Sniper, I can just, again, draw over it and it will grab the text that it sees on that screen share. It's just brilliant. Text Sniper even reads out the text that it grabs for you. So that's really useful, perhaps if you're dyslexic, for example, or if you're visually impaired, or even if you just like listening to text rather than reading it. So Text Sniper, massive time saver. I've been using it for the last two or three months. They were very kind to get in touch and sponsor this video. Check out the link in my description and try it out yourself. My Apple Watch isn't always on my wrist at the moment. I 
talked about this a little while ago, I switched to a G-Shock watch for a month just to see if I'd missed the Apple Watch. And I'll be completely honest with you, I did not miss the Apple Watch much, but I did miss one big, big thing with it, which is the integration the Apple Watch has with your Mac. And this isn't an obvious integration. Apple obviously talks about it, and if you look through the product pages, you can find details on it. But I talked about this again in a recent video, and a lot of people didn't know they could unlock their Mac with their Apple Watch. And I've included it in this list because it's just such a huge time saver. And it's a time saver for two reasons. The first one is the unlocking ability. So if I walk up to my iMac, for example, and move the mouse to get rid of the screen saver, if I've got my Apple Watch on, it will automatically unlock it without me doing anything else. No password, no touch ID, no face ID, nothing. Because the Apple Watch is on my wrist, and I've already unlocked the Apple Watch, it uses that to authenticate my login to the Mac. And I know a lot of people want face ID on the Mac. I'd quite like to see that as well, it'd be great. I know we have touch ID now on the iMac, and we've got had it on the MacBooks for quite a, quite a few years now. None of those things are as simple as just using this. You just, you don't have to do anything. It just works. It just unlocks your Mac. The second reason is that Apple have very smartly used the Apple Watch as a way to authenticate certain things that you do on the Mac. So for example, if you're undertaking an Apple Pay transaction online, you can use the watch to just authenticate the last part of that process. And also, and something I use all the time, is if I need to go into my passwords in macOS in Safari, rather than having to type in the password to get my passwords, basically I go into the password manager in Safari, and if I've got my watch on, it will pop up and say, authenticate, you double click the button here, and it logs you into those passwords. It does the same thing if you're installing software. Basically, most things in macOS where you're asked to authenticate yourself for something to happen can be done with the Apple Watch, and it's just a massive time saver. And to set up that link between the Apple Watch and your Mac, you just go into system preferences, security and privacy, and there's a little tick box that says, use your Apple Watch to unlock apps and your Mac. It's just brilliant, turn it on. Control center is something which just kind of sits there at the top right of the screen. So you'll have your time and date, obviously, but to the left of that, you have a bunch of icons on your menu bar. Now, some of them are there by default, things like your volume and stuff like that, but you may not know that you can customize the controls that appear on your menu bar. And to do that, you just click on the little icon at the top for the control center, which gives you this nice little drop down where you can see things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop, Do Not Disturb, etc. You may not know that you can drag those little controls on to the toolbar. So for example, if you wanna use Do Not Disturb quite often, you can just drag that onto your toolbar and you'll have immediate access to it rather than having to go into Control Center. So on mine, I add Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Display, Do Not Disturb, and the volume. I think some of those are there by default, like I say, but if something isn't there, I just drag it into the menu bar from Control Center. Again, just these little shortcuts that just make your life that little bit easier. My last macOS time-saving tip is actually a kind of three-in-one thing, because it's my three favorite keyboard shortcuts. The first one, I think, is a hangover from my Windows days. I've got a feeling, someone can will probably correct me in the comments if I'm not right with this, I've got a feeling that Apple nicked this from Windows. I'm glad they did. And that is basically command tabbing. In the Windows world, it is alt tabbing. And what it basically lets you do, if you hold down your command key and press your tab key on your keyboard, it will cycle through the apps that you have open. And if you keep pressing tab while you've got command held down, it will just basically bring up the app switcher and you can choose the app you want to go into. However, I use it most commonly when I'm going backwards and forwards between two specific apps because you can just do command tab, command tab, command tab, and it will just quickly flip between the two. If you're not using split screen on macOS, but you want to keep going between two different apps, then command tab is just by far the quickest way of doing it. Otherwise, you've got to go down to the dock and find where the other app is. It's just, it's long-winded. My next keyboard shortcut that I use all the time, I'm going to have to look at it because I can't always remember what, what the keys are, is shift option command V. Now, if you do all of those at the same time, it will paste any text that you've copied from elsewhere as plain text. And this is really important. If you're pasting text, for example, from a Word document into a mail message or from Word into a web form or something, then quite often it will, if you just do a normal paste, it will paste across the styling as well. It just looks terrible. It's just horrible. I love pasting in plain text. And Shift Option Command V will do a plain text paste. Done. I use that more probably than any other shortcut, I think. Now, the last keyboard shortcut that I use all of the time, it feels, is a way to get to emojis more quickly. 
yeah, I know, we, we live in that world now. But if you've got a recent iMac or a pretty recent MacBook, you probably won't need this shortcut because what you will have on your keyboard is one of these, which is basically a very quick way to get to the emoji keyboard. If you don't have that, or for some reason you just don't wanna press that globe button, I don't know why you would, but if, let's just assume you don't have that button if you're using perhaps a, a third party keyboard. If you hold down control and command and press the space bar, you'll get the little emoji keyboard pop-up. Again, I use that all the time because I use quite a lot of emojis like a lot of people. Don't judge me, but I, I, I do that. And even though I've got that globe key on there, if I'm using the magic keyboard, I still do the command control spacebar shortcut and it just gets me to the emojis quickly. I use that all the time, as you can imagine, on some of the mechanical keyboards like the one behind me. And it's just a, a very quick way to, to find your emojis. I really hope you found those little time-saving tips worthwhile. Hopefully one or two of them will save you a bit of time each day. If you've got your own favorite time-saving tips on macOS, get involved in the comments. And if you wanna see what I do when I get a brand new Mac, I made a video recently where I listed my top 10 tweaks that I make to every new Mac to make it work for me. So keep watching for a link to that video. But in the meantime, thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.